Today we're going to talk about personal qualities of a healthcare worker. These are a few key terms that we will be talking about throughout this presentation. Research has shown that within the first 20 seconds to 4 minutes, people form an impression about another person based mainly on appearance. So basically this is talking about whenever you walk in the door for the first time of meeting somebody, you will base your opinion on that person solely based on their appearance within the first 20 seconds to 4 minutes. A healthcare worker should present a healthy appearance because healthcare involves promoting health and preventing diseases. Which of these nurses would you like to see standing over you in the ER? We would like to present a very healthy appearance so that we are promoting what we are teaching our patients. Five factors that contribute to good health. Rest. You must get good adequate rest to allow you to be a very happy person and very productive. You need eight to ten hours of sleep every night. Another factor is good posture. Sitting up, opening up your lungs, allowing yourself to get adequate amount of air in every time you breathe. Also helps keep your, align, your spine aligned and just allows for better posture. Diet. Very important. You are what you eat. If you're eating like crud, eating fast food a lot, it's going to reflect in the way you perform, the way your body might be a little sluggish. So it's very important to maintain a very good and balanced diet. Exercise. This is also very important. Now this doesn't necessarily mean going to the gym and lifting weights, you know, seven days out of the week. This means getting out, increasing your blood pressure, going for a walk for 30 minutes, going for a little jog, riding your bike, playing outside, doesn't necessarily mean you have to go to the gym to get exercise. Another factor is avoiding the use of tobaccos, alcohol, and drugs. This shouldn't be a problem for any of you minors who are under the age of 18 because none of y'all should be doing this anyways. Alright, many healthcare facilities require uniforms. In some cases, the color identifies certain groups. So how would, you, how would a healthcare worker determine what type of color uniform is required? Basically, this will be set by their department. Whenever they're hired, they will probably be told this. Um, having set uniform colors for different departments allows for the workers to be easily identifiable. Also helps identify people that shouldn't be there very easily. Say the pediatric department is required to wear pink scrubs and someone walks in wearing a blue scrub, that would be a big red flag for them to go ask, how can I help you? May I assist you with something? Are you lost? That kind of thing. Professional appearance, a uniform, most often will always be required in the healthcare industry. It typically is um, a form, one form of a scrub, depending on the color, you know, depending on where you work. Making sure that uniform is clean, you don't want a dirty uniform. Make sure, making sure it's ironed if, it's, if you just washed it, if it has any tears in it, getting them repaired, buying new ones. Name badge, very important to always be worn for identification. Most badges will have a picture ID, your name, your position, and what department you work in. Shoes, must have closed toed, typically white, no heel, non-absorbent, and must be kept clean. You want them to be a non-absorbent type of material because there's a high probability that you might get different types of body fluids or different type of fluids spilt on your shoes that you want them to be easily wipe offable so that it doesn't soak up real quickly. Have you ever sat next to someone that didn't have a pleasant air about them? Ugh. Imagine having to work in close contact with that person. Not very fun. How to not be offensive to your coworkers and to your patients. Bathe or shower daily. We should all be doing this as a regular type of a um, thing that we do on a daily basis because bathing and showering is good. Wearing deodorant or antiperspirant. The difference between deodorant and antiperspirant. Deodorant will help block the odor. Antiperspirant will help stop or prevent the sweating, so the liquid part of it. Maintain good oral hygiene, meaning brush your teeth. If you know you have stinky breath after lunch, you don't have your toothbrush with you, chew some gum, put a mint in your mouth, that kind of thing. And then always wear clean underwear. Stinky underwear is not a fun thing. Professional appearance do's and don'ts. Fingernails must be worn short and without polish. So long fingernail polish can, or long fingernails can present a problem. You might accidentally scratch your patient or harm your patient, which you don't want to do. If you have fingernail polish, dark fingernail polish, this could hide any type of blood or body fluids or anything that might get stuck underneath your nails. If you have dark fingernail polish, you can't see that. 
So you want to keep it very short and without fingernail polish. So that way you know if you fully washed your hands. Under your fingernails is one of the most um, gross parts of your body really because that's where one of you really trap lots of bacteria and stuff can get trapped under your fingernails. So it's a really gross part of your body. Next, we're talking about jewelry. Jewelry needs to be kept to a minimum. You don't want to look like Mr. Mr. T there with tons and tons of jewelry. Necklaces can get in the way whenever you're trying to talk to patients. Typically going to have a badge. You don't want those to cover up your, your name badge, your identification. So making sure rings are okay, having, you know, wedding ring, class ring, that's fine. A small chain as a necklace, you know, little studs for earrings, those are perfectly fine. Just making sure it's very minimal jewelry. Healthcare professional image fashion mistakes. Don't wear colored undergarments underneath white material. If you have a light colored scrub top or bottom, make sure you're wearing appropriate colored undergarments. Professional appearance do's and don'ts. Hair and makeup. Hair should be kept clean and neat. If you have long hair, that's okay. But if you do have long hair, you must pull it back off the collar, meaning putting it up in a ponytail and a bun, it must be pulled back. Avoid hair accessories. No real need to have big flashy butterfly in your hair. They look nice, but they're very distracting. They can potentially fall off and become a hazard. Makeup should look natural and not excessive. We're not looking to go out to the club at work. We need to keep our makeup minimal and natural looking. You don't want to be a distraction for your patient. Personal characteristics, certain characteristics and attitudes are required in the healthcare occupation. These are a few examples. Empathy, this is understanding other feelings. Honesty, integrity, admitting mistakes and being trustworthy. Dependability, be on time and consistent. And willingness to learn, meaning that you're willing to do continuing education to keep up your degree. More characteristics, patience, being tolerant and understanding. Acceptance of criticism. Take advice with ease. Enthusiasm. Display a positive attitude and enjoy work. Self-motivation. Do things without being asked. Tact. The ability to present information or handle a situation. Competence. Being an educated and confident, but will ask for help if you're unsure. Most healthcare workers will come in with a set level of competence, meaning you've passed your exams, you've sat for your test, so you have a certain requirement that you must show that you're competent in before you're even hired. Responsibility is another characteristic. You must be willing to be held accountable for your actions. Discretion. Use good judgment when speaking and performing tasks. This has to do with patient confidentiality, which is very, very important with maintaining your job. Also being a team player, making sure that you're working together well with others because you will always work with people in the healthcare industry. You will very, very rarely be working by yourself. Oops. All right, healthcare occupations are constantly changing. With change comes stress. Change is good, change can also be bad. So learn what stresses you out. What to do, what do you do to deal with stress? One important thing is make a plan and pace yourself. If you get into a stressful situation, here are four steps for gaining control. Stop what you're doing, take a deep breath, reflect on what's going on, and choose the best path to take from there on. Can, you, can stress be prevented or reduced? Sure can. Keep things in perspective when events are overwhelming. Don't sweat the small stuff. Increase productivity. Be productive when you're doing stuff. Start getting your stuff done in time so you increase your productivity. Time management. Make sure you're managing your time. Improve, um, improving enjoyment of activities by being product or by increasing your productivity and getting your stuff done helps you enjoy those activities more by not having to stress about oh I should be doing something else other than enjoying your activity and also providing time for relaxation and enjoying life will help reduce stress. Time management. Ways to time to manage your time. Prioritize tasks, set goals, plan your work, avoid distraction, turn those cell phones off. It's okay. You know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram can wait for a minute, I promise. And then take credit for a job well done. In health occupations, leadership is an important concept. Without leadership, people cannot work together and do their best to achieve common goals. A leader. What is a leader? 
A leader is an individual who leads or guides others, or who is in charge or in command of others. So what are some examples of leadership position in healthcare? You have your CEOs, your board, those at the very, very top, but then you have such as your charge nurse, your department heads, those are people that are directly above, like say your just your nurses um, and your healthcare workers. Three types of leaders. We have democratic, those encourages participation by the whole group when making decisions, such as we all vote and go from there. Laissez-faire, hands off leaders. This allows individuals to function independently and do not regulate too much, makes decisions only when forced to. Then you have your autocratic, which is your dictator, makes all decisions and maintains total rule. Individuals usually go along with it in fear of punishment or due to extreme loyalty. So those are your three types of leaders. So what did you learn today? Time to do your whisk.